This is an ultrasound study of uh, 38 years old female in which uh, <coughs> she has been, and she has been referred for a mass in the region of the right hypochondrium, heart immobile mass in the region of the right hypochondrium. Now let's evaluate this patient. I will intentionally like to scan from the pelvic region. This is the uterus of the female. This is the uterus in longitudinal section. This is the cervix and this is the urinary bladder. Okay, then this is the endometrial canal. The endometrial canal is in early proliferative phase and uh, there is no focal length seen in the myometrium. The echogenicity is normal. I am moving the probe transversely to show you the uterus in transverse section. And now in transverse section, we see a cyst in the region of the, uh, this is the cyst, internally clear of any septa, debris, or slash echoes, calcification, nothing clear, says with posterior wall enhancement seen in the region of the left adnexa, measuring approximately 4.2 into 4.2 centimeters, and this is the endometrial canal, this one. <coughs> so, this is the transfer section showing you the uterus, the endometrial canal, the uh, left at next a simple retention ovarian cyst measuring 42 millimeters whereas on the uh, there is no fluid seen in the pelvic cavity this is the uterus again in longitudinal section and when I move the probe towards the uh, uh, right side in the region of the uh, right at inexa I see a mass a large mass now this is a mass this is fluid within the mass this is the solid element within the mass. These are the septas. This is a thick septa. These are the thin septa. Incomplete. Few are complete. Few are incomplete. Small septas. A cystic area within it. So a complex, complex cystic and solid mass with fluid and septation is seen. Now let's see that if we, if the left ovary is uh, visualized or not. Was the reason to uh, scan the adnexa, uh, adnexa uterus and adnexa or pelvis uh, first. Now this is the ovary. This is the uterus. And uh, this is the ovary with evident follicular activity within it. This is the landmark for it. This is the, these are the iliac vessels. This one, this one. And this is the ovarian, the ovarian cyst, right? Sorry, I am very sorry. This is the ovary, right ovary with developing follicles in different stages. One, two, three, four. So, uh, one thing is for clear that it does not relate to the ovary. The ovary is seen uh, normal with developing follicles. Here we are, it measures. Twenty six by twenty four millimeters, and uh, and these are the developing follicles. So this is the right ovary. So the uh, the area which we are going to study, the pathology that we are going to study, is not relating to the uterus at next. Uh, uh, so uh, because its look is somewhat like um, as, as if I show you only this portion. It seems as if this uh, uh, mucinous cyst adenoma sort of a pathology. But no, it's, uh, this does not arise from the pelvis. So uh, we, what is its location is the question. Now this is the right ileosus muscle. This is the 
the right hypochondrium, now below the costal margin, in the region of the right hypochondrium. This is the region of the right hypochondrium. <coughs> and uh, in the region of the neck, you can see a mass, a large mass. This is, uh, now I am in the region of the, this is the liver. This is the liver. This is the right kidney transfer section. These are, this is the hilum of the right kidney. Kidney is normal. However, the liver shows uh, minor portogen radicals, uh, uh, prominence of the minor portogen uh, radicals, suggestive, that, suggestive of the fact that uh, the echogenicity of the liver has gone down. So this is the left kidney, uh, right kidney in longitudinal section of minimal hydronephrosis is because of the uh, pre, uh, because of the mass effect from this uh, uh, complex mass that we are seeing arising from the uh, hypo, right hypochondrium and then it uh, now, what's happening is that this is mass. This is the mass. This is the gallbladder mass, in fact. This is the region of the gallbladder. Now, this mass is giving pressure effect at the, at the region of the porta hepatis. This is the region of porta hepatis, where you are seeing the common bile duct, the porter vein. This is the hepatic artery in transfer section. Now, this mass effect from this solid element within this uh, complex mass uh, at this region, at the region of the porta hepatis, is leading to the uh, intrahepatic bile duct ectasia. You will see that there here the intrahepatic bile ducts are dilated, these ones. This is the left lobe, and uh, you will see the intrahepatic bile duct ectasia in this uh, segment as well, these one. Then uh, moving upwards a bit, you can see the intrahepatic bile duct ectasia. So dilation of the intrahepatic bile ducts is is because of the mass effect of this complex uh, cystic and solid mass with numerous septas. Uh, now this is the intrahepatic bile duct ectasia in the right lobe of the liver. So, uh, but the interesting thing is, now here what you are seeing is the portal vein. This is the portal vein, uh, sorry, this is the portal vein, this is the right branch, this is the posterior branch, and uh, this is the ileal region. Again, now there are lymph nodes in the paraaortic region. As you see, this is the aorta, superior mesenteric artery. This is a lymph node. This is a lymph node. This is a lymph node. So there, there are para aortic and lymph nodes seen. Trying to give you another better view. I am working since 11 p.m. Straight, I'm tired now. But anyways, the case came at a time where I could not let her go without uh, making a video for your teaching. This is the lymph node. This is the lymph node. So, and you can see that the uh, it appears that the superior mesentery artery arising from the aorta is elevated by the solid areas which are lymph nodes. So periotic plant adenopathy is obvious and uh, the mass uh, the, uh, extends from this, uh, again I am going to show you, from the right hypochondrium region, this is the right hypochondrium, this is the right hypochondrium and I am showing you in different angles. Okay, now from right hypochondrium, it moves straight down up to the right lower abdominal, uh, uh, right lower abdominal quadrant. This is the right lower abdominal quadrant. 
And this is the hypocon view again. Where you can see the mass effect is quite obvious on the region, that region of the porta hepatis. This is the common bile duct is not dilated, it's my ears only 3.7 and uh, this is the hepatic vein, I'm sorry, the hepatic artery in transfer section. This is the portal vein, this is the IBC, this is the aorta and this is the complex mass. So, continue unless proven otherwise. This is a, now the pancreas, the most important thing I was, I was going to miss. This is the pancreatic body and head of the pancreas. This is the pancreatic body. This is the superior mesenteric vein. And this is the, from subclinic angle, this is the superior mesenteric vein. So the subclinic vein, sorry. This is the subclinic vein and this band of white tissue is the pancreas body. This is the tail and uh, here now I wish to show you the head of the pancreas. And you can see that there is another lymph node in the thyroid pancreatic region. This is the lymph node. This is the head of the pancreas. I am magnifying it. And this is the duct. This is the head of the pancreas and this is the duct. So the pancreas is normal in dimension, in echogenicity, with no dilation of the duct and no mass seen relating to the uh, pancreas. This is the aorta and uh, this is the liver. You can see the hepatic vein. Now this is the middle hepatic vein. This is the IVC right hepatic vein. Again a view of a well encapsulated complex mass arising from the region of the gallbladder fossa that is a GP mass and extending into the lower abdomen in the midline the periaortic and adenopathy and uh, with mass effect on the common hepatic duct rather that leads to now the mass effect is, uh, sorry, not on the common bile duct, but it is on the common hepatic duct because of which the intrahepatic bile duct tractasia was seen and shown. See the configuration appearance. There are calcified areas also within this solid mass. This is a calcification giving posterior shadow from this globular area. There is calcification within this solid ecogenic globular area, this one. So this is uh, our case of the day, again, with simply normal, no perpular effusion, and the normal right kidney, the sous muscle left side, this strap, muscle on the on the muscle on the right side. So this is a case study in summary that of a complex cystic and solid mass relating to the gallbladder with mass effect on the common hepatic duct leading to intrahepatic bile duct ectasia uh, 
Vedic Terra Aortic Plan Cardinopathy and with the mass effect on the right ureter as evident by the, this is the kidney, minimal hydronephrosis. Now the mass has both cystic, solid, both components with debris in the dependent region. This is the debris in the dependent region with multiple septations and a few tiny calcifications as well. Thank you very much.